excited. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into our questions for the day. And I'm going to start with the first one, really getting down to basics. And as somebody who is a Japanese teacher, I am fascinated by uh, Russian Cyrillic and how all that works. So I would love to know how you start teaching reading and writing and Russian in general. So things like the Cyrillic alphabet, sound systems, and characters. Shannon, I would love to hear what you think about all this. Sure. And it was really interesting that on Monday, even though that wasn't the focus of our uh, panel, there was a lot of discussion about these things in the chat. Um, and so it's obviously something that's on a lot of people's minds and everybody has a different um, opinion about some of these things. And I think um, there are many different ways to approach it, but I can just describe what I do in my classes in, in the beginning um, when we're learning. Uh, the alphabet, handwriting, typing, et cetera. And I think I'm kind of collapsing your first couple questions together into one, but um, uh, we'll just uh, go with it. So um, I do teach the uh, alphabet really early. Um, I start working with them in the alphabet in the first week or two, even week uh, of class. And the reason I do that is because I feel that a lot of people like having that visual support uh, to what they're learning when they're speaking. Obviously, there's a lot of value in um, having them just listen and and learn learn some things right at first, even without the alphabet, like greetings, etc. But I do start really early and. Um, in general, my class follows a kind of flipped classroom model, and I teach um, I teach uh, online, but I also teach uh, hybrid and in-person courses as well. And so, when I'm talking about these things, all of those are sort of in my mind, not not limited to online. But it's kind of a flipped classroom model where my students do activities before class so that they're prepared for what we're gonna do in class. And uh, so to that end, I have a set of lessons that I developed that my students use. And I developed them in part uh, in cooperation with some other people at the Middlebury School of Russian. And so you can find these lessons on the Middlebury School of Russian's pre-immersion site. If you're familiar with Middlebury, you know that they have a language pledge. And so once, people get to campus, they're not supposed to speak languages other than than Russian. And so you can imagine how difficult that is for level one students who have no background. And so a few years ago, I forget how long it was, more than five years though, I think maybe six or seven years ago, we developed what we call the pre-immersion site and that helps students get ready to come to campus. And it was for all students for the Middlebury School of Russian, but in particular, we had a section that was for students who were going to be joining level one. And so we developed, and um, some of the people who were involved in that were Jason Merrill, Yevgeny Dingub, Susanna Nazarova. Um, and uh, so we have a set of four lessons that you can find on that site. The first three of them introduce uh, the letter and things like cognates and pictures, visuals, et cetera. Um, and then similar to some other alphabet learning lessons you, you might uh, see around, but you're welcome to use them if you're interested in them. But I wanted to in particular mention the fourth lesson. Uh, I'm really proud of the fourth lesson. It, it actually won uh, an award from uh, the H5P, they were called the H5P Academy Awards. <laughs> so um, it won an award. Uh, for interactive sort of uh, instructional technology. Um, and what the fourth lesson does is it it's called a day in St. Petersburg. And it takes what students have learned for their new reading skills of uh, knowing the alphabet and imagines if they were in St. Petersburg for a day and what they would do with those reading skills. So we pretend that they go on the Metro and have to read a sign. We pretend that they uh, go to a bookstore and have to find the section of the bookstore that they want to go to. We pretend that they get hungry for lunch and go to a, a restaurant and have to uh, choose a restaurant. Um, and we pretend that they buy a ticket to a theater performance. And so 
the idea hopefully is that they can then imagine themselves actually using these new skills. So those four lessons are what I start with to teach them the Cyrillic alphabet. And I find that, um, you know, they, and I'm pretty sure that most of the, my other colleagues see this as well, that, you know, it takes a while for them to get confident with it, for, but for them to get started, it's pretty quick. Um, we do it over a week or two, and then they just continue to uh, solidify their, their skills. Um, I guess I can come back to handwriting and typing uh, at a, for a later question and, and hand it off to Heather to tell about her experience. Oh, absolutely. And we will definitely talk quite a bit, I'm sure, about handwriting and typing. It's quite a hot topic. Heather, would love to get your input on, again, same question. So how do you start reading and writing in Russian in general, teaching the Cyrillic alphabet, sound systems, characters, things like that? Um, well, I, I actually stole an idea from a book when I was um, teaching high school Russian. I think I was using, I think it was beginner's Russian and their approach is the one that I adopted. And that was kind of chunking the alphabet into um, three different parts. And so what, what I do now is I teach the alphabet in three distinct different lessons. I take 10 um, characters for the first couple of days. And these are the most recognizable characters, the ones that are most similar to the English, most uh, like equivalent to English letters. And I teach them the the letter, the, what the letter is called in Russian and the sound that it makes and um, how it's written in block letters. And of course, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and then I get them to start from day one, actually reading, combining these 10 letters into cognates. So I did, a, like, I, I sat down and I really just kind of brainstormed for a couple of hours what are the cognates that I can make from these 10 letters? And there, there are quite a few. Um, and so we start just taking it bit by bit. Um, so just with those 10 letters. And I include um, a couple of words that aren't cognates so that they can immediately start making questions and answers. And they include kuto, shto, and eta. And that's who, what, and this is. Um, and then the other um, letters combined to make either people's names or just common uh, nouns that they will recognize. So there are three new Russian words with these first 10 letters and then um, cognates that as soon as they say them, they'll know what they are. And then we proceed like after we do that, we take another 11 letters and then another, I think the last 12 letters. Um, the second set of letters are, um, they look like they would be familiar for the most part, but they aren't. So this would be letters like the Russian N, which looks like the English H, or the Russian R, which looks like the English P. And then the last set of letters is the most um, foreign looking. So they may be letters like Z, um, the one that looks like the Kim Kardashian perfume sign <laughs> is what a high school student told me. So that's how that's how I approach it. And it takes about a week. I love that analogy. And that's quite interesting. One of your students came up with that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so yeah, so I, I like the idea of chunking it down and especially pulling those cognates in. It's a great way to get the students involved on day one. So fantastic idea. 